Imagine a future where we're able to build autonomous robots that can seamlessly navigate in complex environments. Robots can, can use onboard cameras and sensors to avoid obstacles and move across tight spaces. Can understand objects and humans around them. Can track and coordinate with other robots and interact with the environment. These capabilities will unlock a huge number of practical applications. For instance, they will power autonomous robots helping first responders and delivering supplies in disaster scenarios. They would enable drones to perform crop monitoring and spraying in precision agriculture. They would allow spacecrafts to land safely on other planets, for example, by powering the navigation system that will bring us back to the moon. And these are the very same capabilities required to enable self-driving cars to navigate safely on our roads. While the video I was showing here is just a computer animation for a commercial, my group at MIT is working into making these capabilities into reality and to develop these capabilities for our robots and autonomous vehicles. In particular, we focus on something that is called robot perception, which is the problem of making robots understand the world around them. Robot perception is, uh, can be understood as a collection of problems, including mapping the environment around the robots, understanding objects and localizing objects around the robots, understanding the semantics, what, what are the objects around the robot, as well as tracking as they move over time. A key motivation behind the work in my group is to realize that there is still a large gap separating human perception from robot perception. Take this image as an example. So it's a fairly confusing image, but as a human, if you study it for a few seconds, you realize that the image does not actually picture a human and does not picture a car, but both the person and the car are painted on top of this white band. So let's try to feed this image to a state-of-the-art transformer-based model for semantic understanding. This is what we get. In other words, the model is not, unable, is not able to perform the complex reasoning that goes into distinguishing a real person from a drawing. Let's take another example, maybe a more straightforward one, okay? So here there is a robot going in, into a burning building. Of course, as humans, we see the robot, we see the fire, and we can easily parse the scene. If we feed the same image, like, you know, to the transformer model I was talking about, this is what we get. The model is completely incapable of detecting the robot, does not see the fire, and also made a, make a quite, uh, quite bad mistake, like in classifying a regular pipe as uh, a fire hydrant, which is a pretty bad mistake to make if you're trying to extinguish a, a fire. So this gap between human and robot perception is not just an intellectual gap, but it's a very consequential one. Robots that are unable to understand the world around them are bound to making correct and potentially dangerous decisions. This is an example for a Uber, from a Uber self-driving car back in 2018. Just as a heads up, like you know, the video might be a little bit disturbing for some of you. The death of a pedestrian in Arizona this week. Today, police released this dashboard video of the collision. The car appears not to have slowed down, its safety driver only realizing moments before the crash. So the perception system on board the self-driving car completely failed to detect the pedestrian killing the woman uh, in the impact. Unfortunately, these are not isolated events, but are getting more and more common with increasing testing and deployment of self-driving technologies. Just three days ago, Tesla had to recall two million vehicles, two million vehicles, because of safety concern with the autopilot. And a New York Times article reported that crew self-driving requires human intervention every two to five miles, meaning a human as to supplement robot perception and robot decision making every five miles of autonomous driving. So how can we improve the perception and navigation capabilities of our robots and autonomous vehicles? Well, my group has, has, at MIT has been thinking about perception as an optimization problem. In this problem, you're looking for an explanation of reality that best explains the sensor data by searching among many potential world models. In other words, we want to find an explanation that minimizes the mismatch between our internal model of the world and the world we observe. The issue here is that this optimization problem is very hard to solve, and it has multiple valleys, what are called local minima. If you're able to reach the bottom of this function, like you know, the global, globally optimal solution, you get a good explanation of the world, but if you're stuck in a local minimum, you get a poor understanding of reality. So over the last 10 years, we have been developing a set of algorithms to make this optimization problem most tractable. Um, one of the ideas that we really like is to transform the optimization problem, which has multiple valleys, it's something that is called a non-convex optimization, into something with a single valley, which is much easier to optimize. 
This uh, process is called convex relaxation. We have also worked on certification methods that can understand whether a given model is returning a correct solution, an optimal solution, or is making a mistake, as well as learning-based methods that can learn over time from these mistakes and improve the system without human supervision. This is what is called self-supervised learning. Finally, we realized that real-world perception systems include a complex interaction of multiple algorithms. Therefore, we work on, we work on system-level monitoring tools that are able to detect failures in real-world perception systems. Overall, this is what we call the certifiable perception toolbox. We have used algorithms in our certifiable perception toolbox for many, many applications over the years, from search and rescue to uh, self-driving to space applications. For instance, we use these algorithms for mapping large-scale underground environments for search and rescue in the context of the DARPA Subterranean Challenge. The DARPA Subterranean Challenge was a large international competition involving top robotics group worldwide. Just to give a sense of what's possible, these robots in this case are able to build a map of a cave with less than one meter error after traversing one kilometer in the cave, of course without GPS and without any external localization system. Picture yourself doing the same thing. You're, you're, you're traversing in a cave for one kilometer, and after that, you have to draw a map which is one meter, as less than one meter error. That's virtually impossible task for humans. We've been working on uh, using these algorithms to perform vision-based navigation for uh, um, uh, autonomous valet parking in collaboration with Ford, and also we worked on fall detection for self-driving in collaboration with NVIDIA. Finally, we have uh, deployed some of our algorithms on uh, space applications in collaboration with Draper, and uh, my students were fortunate enough actually to fly the algorithms they develop on top of this very same rocket, which is uh, Blue Origin New Shepard rocket launched in 2022. Let me just give you a quick example here. Um, so this is an example of the system we developed to detect failures and to monitor system level uh, perception. Um, so in this video, we're recreating a Tesla accident back from 2018. The vision system in this case failed to, de to detect an overturned truck and crashed into it. Our system on the other end is able to detect inconsistencies in the sensor data and is detecting a fault. Therefore, it decides to stop the car before crashing into the obstacle. In our test, our methods correctly detect 93% of the faults leading to collisions, and it does so around five seconds before the collision. That might not seem to be a lot of, lot, lot of time, but actually in this application, it takes around two seconds to bring the vehicle to a complete stop and avoid the accident. So the gap between human and robot perception is not only in terms of robustness and reliability, but also in terms of the quality and richness of the internal model that we have of reality. Robots have become extremely good at detecting objects, but as humans, we are doing much more than that. Let me prove this with a single image. As humans, you can stare at this image, and uh, in a few seconds, you can form a mental picture of what the image is about. You can even picture the 3D geometry of the scene, right? There is a road, there are buildings. You can picture and detect objects and even uh, try to figure out their 3D location in the scene. And you can even reason about relations among entities in the scene. You can uh, maybe guess that some of the pedestrians are trying to cross the street, or maybe the cars are passing a green traffic light. So how can we give the same level of understanding to our robots? Over the last few years, we focused on allowing robots to understand geometry, semantics, and relations in 3D. We've been combining the state of the art in 3D mapping with the state of the art in deep learning to develop new tools for 3D understanding. For instance, what you're seeing in this video is what we call Chimera, which is a system able to perform metric semantic mapping in real time. Here, the robot explores a completely unknown environment and builds a 3D model of its geometry, that's what is called a 3D mesh, but also understands the presence of different objects in the environment, and these indeed are labeled with different colors in the video that you see. For example, yellow are cubicles, where green are chairs, and so on. The approach is even able to reason over dynamic entities in the environment. For example, is able to reconstruct 3D dense uh, models of humans moving in front of the camera. The most recent version of our work is able to reason over geometry, semantics, and relations in a fraction of a second on board of a robot. In this example, the robot starts in a completely unknown environment and is able to estimate the trajectory of the robot itself, is able to detect multiple objects, and understand that there is a sink, there are cabinets, there are appliances, 
and reason over the relations between multiple objects to figure out that the room the robot started in has to be a kitchen in this case. The resulting system is something that we call Hydra, and as many other works from my group, Hydra has been released open source with a very permissive license to allow other people to use, improve, and build applications on. Equipped with these novel perception capabilities, we have been working on developing the next generation of robots that can understand the environment and interact with the environment. In this video, you see a drone that is picking up a first aid kit in a disaster response scenario. This, contrary to the video I was showing at the beginning, is not just a computer animation, but is rather a photorealistic simulation with real physics running in the background and also with our algorithms running in the background. Indeed, we have been able to complete the second prototype showing the very same capabilities in the real world. Here, what you see is a drone which is able to um, detect an object and grasp it on the fly. The demo is not relying on any external localization system, but the, the system is using, the drone is using just onboard sensors and compute to detect the object and grasp it. Um, the drone is even able to retreat first aid kits from uh, moving platforms in this case. So this is a picture of my daughters, uh, Luna and Aurora. What I want to say is that while we made impressive progress in robot perception over the last 10 years, our robots still don't understand the world with the same level of complexity we do as humans or even toddlers do. Today I presented some baby steps we made in bridging the gap between human and robot perception, but the more I think about robot perception, the more I realize how amazing humans are. Solving robot perception is a grand challenge, but it's a challenge that has the potential to unlock the full potential of robotics and will allow us to save lives during disaster response, will make our self-driving cars safer and more reliable, and will help us build a better future for the next generation. Thank you. <laughs>